Welcome back to part two of having fun with VCarve and designing funky little catch all trays. In part one, if you haven't seen part one, I'll put a link to that below. We did this basic little oval and this little funky dude, which I really like, sort of a simulation of a leather catch all tray. And in this one, we're gonna get a little bit funky with some animal head design. So back to the software. So animal shaped trays, I'm going to go with a cat shaped tray first. So I've got a new file started, same workpiece size, 200 by 200, 29 mil thick, Z zeros on top of the workpiece, XY datums, bottom left hand corner, standard resolution. So I found a little image of a cat, a real simple cat. The idea being that when I cut the outside profile, it will look to people like a cat. It'll make them think pussy puss cat. So the first thing I'm going to do is get Vectric to trace the bitmap. That looks fine. Yeah, happy with that. Let's turn off the bitmap layer so we've just got the vectors showing and I'm going to ungroup them get rid of that bit of writing and I'll group them back up again and now we'll set the size to match the workpiece that looks pretty good happy with that so I'm going to ungroup them again. I'm going to delete this, this, and this. And I'm going to select those and use an offset again. Let's try 6 mil. And that can be my inner cut to size the wall. And I'll use that again, 6 mil wall. So that'll be my outside. That'll be my inside, a little bit bigger around the ears. And I'll use a V-bit to just carve that into the bottom to give it a nice smiley face. And that's essentially it. Really simple and straightforward. And I use a profile bit first. Got my quarter inch bit. 2.8 mil on a single pass is too much. I think 2 mil is more than enough. 23 mil depth of cut, cutting on the outside. Let's call it outside profile. That looks fine. Now we'll do the pocket cut. So that's the boundary for my pocket cart. Got the same bit, 23 mil down. Oops, wrong way. Two mil depth of cart, I think is more than enough. Profile pass on the last cart. And pocket. looks good and then finally we want an engraving cut with a v-bit so my v-bit is a four five six two four quarter inch looks good thank you very much so i'm gonna have a start depth of 23 mil and i'm gonna get it to cut a mill deep and we're going to get it to cut them it looks as sweet as a peach so let's just go back to the 2d and see what size that is 166 or so cut 180 mil off the end of my blank and we'll see how this one turns out. 
So the cat face tray, I think, has come out really, really well. I'm really happy with the shape. The quintessential cat face, isn't it? Sort of thing you'd expect a, a child to draw, but instantly recognisable as a cat. And the V-carved detail on the bottom, I think, just adds to it that little bit. I'm wondering whether I should have made that a little bit deeper, maybe two mil deep instead of one. I might play with that a little and see whether that makes it better or worse. As far as tool marks are concerned, it's come out really well. Very little in the way of tool marks on the outside, but I do have some step over marks on the inside. Anyway, on to the next, to see if we can find a puppy dog. Once again, I've set up a new file with all the basic settings exactly the same as the previous, so I won't bother to run through those again. Now, after browsing Google for quite a while, it seems to be a little more difficult to find a generic dog picture than a generic cat picture. I found what I believe to be as generic as possible a dog picture it does seem very sort of labrador like to me but i also think it's going to be quite doable as well so i've just imported it as you've seen and i'll now get vetric to trace the bitmap i think that looks pretty good and then we'll turn the bitmap off so we can just see what it's brought in i'll select the vector and i'm going to do an offset again six mil from the outside and then what I want to do is delete these internal bits because they're not required. With the original vector selected, I'm going to move that to a new layer. So I can get rid of that, then I can delete these bits. as they are not required, I only wanted the outside piece. Then if I turn that layer back on again, now I can do another offset on the outside of that line to give me my outside perimeter of the bowl. And now I can size all of this to match my workpiece. That looks perfect. Okay, so now I'm ready to move over to make a tool pass. So I'll start with the outside profile cart. Change my bit, 46438. I'm gonna drop that feed rate down to 120. I felt that was a little quick. Start depth is zero, cut depth of 23 mil. And I want a max cut depth of two mil. So I've got 11 passes cutting on the outside. Happy with everything else. I'm going to call it outside profile again. That looks good. Now I'm going to do the pocket cut. Start at zero, cut depth 23, 46438. And I'm going to go again for a max of a 2 mil depth cut. I'm going to see what the offset cut is like this time. Main pocket. Let's calculate that and see what it looks like. Okay, and then finally to carve out the dog's face. So I'll use an engraving toolpath with a start depth at 23 mil. I've got a 4564 60 degree V groove bit. And I'm gonna hit calculate. Let's run this a little slower so we can see what it's doing. That actually looks pretty good. That really does look like the puppy dog. So let's run this up and see how it comes out. Well, up to this point, the cat tray has been my favourite, but I think the dog tray may have just beaten it. 
The outside profile doesn't look dog-like at all. Unlike the cat tray, that's obviously a cat. This is just a shape. Without the V-carve on the base, it doesn't represent a dog at all, but that really takes it to the next level, to the point where I'm thinking I need to do a little better with the cat tray. I've got some burn marks around the outside, which is in part due to the places that I paused when I was trimming off the outside, but also in part due to the fact that my bit is starting to get a little bit blunt now and could do with being changed. But overall, I'm very happy with the dog tray. I think it looks like a Labrador. Um, so if I'm going to do dog trays at a trade show, I think I may need to pick a couple of breeds to do. So on to the last tray and I'm thinking dragons. So for my final bowl, I'm going to go with a circle, the molding tool path and a couple of dragons. My job setup is exactly the same as the previous, so I'll not bore you with those settings again. And I'm going to go straight in to make my first circle and I'm going to center it in the middle of the workpiece and I'm going for a diameter of 174 mil. Then I'm going to use the offset tool to make another circle six mil outside of the circle I've just made. And that represents the thickness of my wall. Now I'm going to draw an yet another circle at 134 mil in diameter. And that circle is going to represent the border for the main material removal, the pocket toolpath. Next thing I need to do is to create a rectangle. And I want this rectangle 30 mil wide, 40 mil tall and I'm going to have 15 mil radius on the corners. So I'm going to, just going to move that out of the way because I don't want all of it. I want part of it so I can use it as the profile for the molding toolpath. So I'm going to go into the node edit mode and I'm going to cut on that point there and cut on that point there. And I'm just going to use this portion of that rectangle for the profile. So the last thing I need to do is bring in the picture of my dragons. So I'll trace the bitmap. That looks pretty good. Turn off the bitmap layer. I can resize my dragons to sit inside of that inner circle. So I'm going to start with the pocket tool path. I'm going for a 20mm depth of cut, 6mm flat end mill again. I'm going to set to 10 so I get 2mm on each pass. I'm going to use an offset tool pattern. I'm going to ramp the plunge moves over a quarter of an inch 6mm. I'm going to call it main pocket and hit calculate. So no surprises there. The next toolpath I'm going to do is the molding toolpath. But in order to do that, I need to cut this circle in half. Otherwise, I won't be able to control which direction VCarve Pro cuts it in. So that's ju literally just split the circle in half. Now I can go into the molding toolpath, choose those two halves and choose the profile that I want it to cut. Reverse this one so that all the lines are on the inside. Then I know it'll cut inside the circle. So I've got a 20 mil depth of cut. I've got a six mil ball nose bit, varying the step over so it makes the step over match the profile that I've got. I'm gonna use a large area clearance tool, which again is gonna be my six mil flat end mill ramp the plunge moves and a machining allowance of 0.25 of a mil and I've got a boundary offset set at four mil so let's calculate that and see what we've got we'll do the clearance pass first and then we'll do the ball nose pass to smooth it all out That 
looks perfect. So two more left to do. I want the outside profile, which again, six mil flat end bit. Two mil depth of car, cut on the outside. Six mil ramp. We'll call that the outside profile. Not expecting any surprises there. And finally, we'll carve the dragons in the bottom. So we've got a start depth at 20 mil, 60 degree V groove bit. And we'll call this dragon V carve. So everything looks sweet as a peach. Where this bolt has come out, I believe, the best of all, and I know I said that about the last one, but that moulding tool path using that curve from the rectangle is just beautiful. I think that's perfect. However, the downside of that is the amount of time it took. I think that tool path was around half an hour, and I could decrease the amount of time for the tool path by increasing the step over, but if I do that, I'm going to have more cleanup. And the whole idea of running a CNC is to not have to do it myself. The dragons, I think, have come out a little bit underwhelming, but I didn't really pay an awful lot of attention to it. I should have paid a little bit more. However, the overall effect, I think, is very pleasing. So what have I learned doing this, playing with my CNC? And I've learned that the software is ultimately capable. I've learned that my CNC machine, the Use Nest, is really capable from what I've asked to do it's from what I've asked it to do so far I believe I could have spent far more time optimizing the tool pass with lead-ins and ramp-ins and trying to get rid of more of the cut lines trying to reduce the time but that wasn't the object of the exercise the object of this exercise was to play and experiment and see what it was like and what I could do and from that perspective, I'm absolutely delighted. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please consider giving me a thumbs up and possibly subscribe to the channel to see what else I'll get up to. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Ta-ra.